When I started to come out in my second year of undergrad, I was able to be more confident about what I wanted to pursue, what interests me, and I was better about not caring what others thought I should be doing or, or what my family thought I should be doing and just pursue what was interesting to me. Hello, I'm Tony Edgington, he, him. I am a PhD student and a research fellow at Boston College. Currently, I label myself as a queer or gay cisgender man. As a PhD student, I kind of wear many hats. I teach, I take classes, I do research, I mentor students. And then as a researcher, which is kind of the main component of my job, I consider myself to be a sedimentologist and geochronologist. So I study how humans, how climate and our environment and changes of those factors affect our landscape. I have, I guess, a familial identity that I really like. I am very proud and lucky to be a brother and uncle, which are important roles in my life. So I grew up in a suburb of Houston, Texas. I have family kind of spread throughout all of Houston and in parts of Austin. So I spent most of my life in, in Texas until the last few years. I grew up in a suburb that was pretty tight knit. It was relatively large. It was kind of a city of its own. And I had extended family kind of all throughout Houston and, and the suburb that I lived in. I was very close to my family growing up. We spent all of our holidays together. I had a tight knit of community of neighbors, family, friends, friends that were my age on my street that I kind of grew up with and played with day to day. It was a relatively supportive environment, but it was also very heteronormative and that kind of clashed with my identity as a queer person or emerging queer person. It was um, restricting in that way, but I was lucky to have a lot of people to support me. I say I definitely knew that I was kind of different than the kids around me for some reason or another. I was trying to figure out probably in, in middle school. And then in high school, maybe the beginning of high school is when I started to like attach that LGBTQ identity. Like I said, I grew up in a very like religious and conservative community. So there were no queer spaces, whether those were organized or organic. There were no clubs at my high school. There might have been a gay straight alliance, but it wasn't visible that I that I knew of. And if there was, I probably would have been too scared to join one at that age, honestly. There weren't any really queer kids that were out in my grade. There was only a couple and unfortunately they were bullied at school. And I witnessed that every day on the school bus to school and in classes. And so that was something that kept me from coming out younger. And that resulted in a lack of, um, you know, queer spaces and an environment to be supportive. Yeah. I looked up to, I'd say mostly looked up to my teachers. My teachers were very um, supportive. I looked up to my older sister. Looking back, I probably looked up to my parents more than I would like to have admitted. <laughs> yeah, I also looked up to kind of some of my extended family members, like my uncles and aunts. When I was much younger, kind of in primary school, I was really interested in arts. That was what I did every day. I liked to draw, I liked to write, to paint. Later on, I picked up photography. And I remember this time on the bus, one of my best friends, I was just drawing on the bus to school and. I think I was painting or, or drawing a sunset. And my friend goes, I think one day you're going to be like a, f a great artist and everyone's gonna see your, your paintings and, and love them. I think because of the pressure of my family and of my community, I was kind of encouraged to, to pursue more of a STEM route. And I was interested in STEM as well. I kind of like to dabble in a lot of things. I was just very curious and wanted to learn. I started just reading about, um, reading books and, and articles and watching documentaries and sustainability and environmentalism really spoke to me. And so that's kind of what I pursued later. I wasn't exposed to earth sciences or sustainability or environmentalism in high school. There wasn't really a, a class for that. So I got that knowledge and exposure just on my own. Growing up, I, even though I was in the, in the suburbs, we did have, we had a little plot of land next to our house that was undeveloped. It was too small to put a house there. So it was like a miniature forest within a suburb. And essentially every day I went outside and um, I, unlike my other friends, I didn't really care for video games or anything. So I like to play outside. 
I would go into that little patch of trees and I would just dig around. I would look at rocks and the dirt and leaves and the berries. And that's kind of what I guess nurtured my, my love for the environment. Later on, when I read about uh, environmentalism and climate change, it just seemed so dire. And that's kind of what drew me in was this problem that, you know, needed a solution. So I was kind of uh, motivated to go into the route of engineering and STEAM, also pressured by just kind of the environment that I was in to pursue something that's, you know, very professional. And so that's what got me into STEAM in the first place was kind of an engineering. Then I realized that it wasn't exactly what I wanted, that a lot of engineers work on maintaining systems and honestly just working in the office a lot. And so I wanted to be more outdoors and work hands on. And so I started to take a couple classes in geology and earth sciences, and that definitely satiated my interests more. So I pursued that. I had more of a traditional route into my career. I went into undergrad right after high school and I started out in engineering and I liked it at first, but it quickly became uninteresting and didn't seem to align with, with where I wanted to be. Fortunately, I had to stick it out. I had pressure from family and, and, and just from my environment to, to stay in there, but I was able to tack on another degree in geology that really just gave me the motivation and interest to keep studying. I got involved in some research. I um, kind of had this aha moment in a class, in a field course, my first field course for geology. And if you know anything about geology, it's all about working in the field, uh, or at least that's how the education program is typically set up. Although now it's becoming a lot more diverse and people who work in all types of environments can, can be a geoscientist, whether that's you know doing computational work or lab work as well. It was being in the field and working with my teaching assistant for that course that really gave me that moment of clarification and, and gratification. I had a TA that became my mentor and took me under her wing and I learned a lot about geosciences and research. She was a non-traditional student so she just taught me a lot about life. She had a lot of life experience and she invited me to go to Argentina to do field work as an undergraduate, which is a very rare opportunity. Most undergraduates in geology usually just do lab or local field research. And so I was researching essentially how landscapes evolve. So we were in the Patagonian desert and we were studying essentially how the Andes and the desert of Patagonia evolved about a hundred million years ago, you know, when dinosaurs roamed the earth. And we studied how Plate tectonics uh, affected the landscape. I decided I want to go on to grad school and I was mentored to help go through that process. And I started a master's. I studied a similar thing from undergraduate, but I worked even further back in time in the Paleozoic. What was the most valuable experience from that is learning to work with others, learning how to compromise, how to um, go about tasks and goals. So I was able to take that and come back into my program and work with people kind of with a, a different perspective. And yeah, geosciences is interdisciplinary and it, it focuses on taking different fields and integrating them together to study earth systems as a whole. You know, I work with um, geographers and chemists and biologists, um, evolutionary ecologists, and it's really rewarding to do that. And I guess for me, the issues that I see are really relevant and that I care about most are um, access to clean water and food. And, and because of that, that, you know, we need clean water to, to grow food. And so I'd say implementing um, facilities that address the um, issues of water quality and quantity. And so I think there's a lot of great technologies that are emerging. And I think what we need to do is invest in those technologies right now. There's certain industries that are uh, motivated financially by institutions, by the government, by the stock markets, and that's you know auto industry and agricultural industries. I think those need to be revolutionized through technology and we need to fund those technologies. So new ways to drill for water or to store carbon and new ways to grow agriculture that reduces our consumption of water and fertilizers and pesticides. There's a lot of solutions out there that already exist. They're just not being funded and recognized because of the interests of other corporations and different uh, sectors of the economy. 
When I got into STEAM, it felt like there weren't a lot of queer spaces. Engineering can be very heteronormative and very extractive. It's an industry that I think is closely tied and controlled by, you know, capitalist institutions. And so it's more about like what you produce rather than who you are as a whole when, you, when you're working towards providing that service or product that, you know, is your job. When I got into STEAM via engineering, it felt very restricting and I couldn't find a space to feel comfortable with. My classes felt very cold and isolating. And it was hard though, as a closeted queer person to feel comfortable and to find a group of students that I could relate to. When I went more to the side of geology, the environment was different. Students in geology just felt more loose and relaxed. <laughs> and, and I think engineering gets that rap that it's, you know, very logical, very stringent um, personalities who are in engineering. But in geology, it was just a lot more liberal. People were very more creative with their studies. And I felt more of a, of a space for my queerness later in my studies. There were more openly queer kids in the geology program. At first, I felt really constrained and I didn't know how to work my queerness into my profession. I wanted to gain that confidence in my work by being confident in who I was outside of work. I've been very lucky to be to feel supported and comfortable being out in, my, in most of my workplaces that I've been in, especially the one I'm in now. I have a really great research group at the University of Connecticut that is mostly queer people, and we're all very supportive. We have a very uh, visible queerness to our group, and, and we make sure that we are welcoming to all of uh, students, uh, undergraduates, and high schoolers that we incorporate into our group through outreach events and whatnot. And so we make sure that our queerness is visible and our identities are visible. I've been very lucky the last couple of years and I've had a very supportive environment. It was not always like that. Like in undergrad, I worked several jobs and, and some of them just felt dismissive of, you know, my identity or didn't seem to care about, you know, who I was and who I'm bringing. But I think queer people, um, we bring a, a resilience and a resourcefulness that other people don't have. And we've been told we can or cannot be ourselves in certain ways. And so I think what we bring to the table is, is resilience. Climate change is, is a queer issue in that much like the issue of equity in the workplace. We don't all have equity unless everyone has equity. So climate change is, is an issue that affects everyone, but in different magnitudes, right? And so there's different parts of our identities that may make us more prone to the effects of climate change, where we live, our race, our economic status. And so I think climate change is something that queer people should definitely contribute to, to solving. And like I was mentioning earlier, I think our resilience and resourcefulness as a community is essential to helping solve problems like climate change. I think in recent years, I'm really proud of pursuing the path that speaks to me the most and not allow allowing others to influence my career path and my interests. I started off kind of listening to what I should do, what's best for me, and, you know, people who, who tell you to do one thing or another, they might have the best interest in heart and they're trying to help, but we're influenced by the people around us and we don't know how to listen to our, the beat of our, our drum, our own drum. And so I, I'm just proud in the recent years to care less about what others think and just pursue my interests. I mean, STEAM influences much of our built environment, right? And so if that built environment is dictated or envisioned by a select group of people, a monolithic group of people, then that's not going to be a better version of our world. I think that uh, STEAM people need to, need to and should be able to contribute and redefine the fields of STEAM. And geosciences, it's one of the least diverse fields within STEM. And there's been a lot of recognition with the, of that in the last decade within the geosciences or sciences community. And so there's been efforts to try to diversify our field and make it more inclusive and accessible to people. It's very expensive to enroll in geoscience programs. There's usually a lot of fees related to the field courses. It's inaccessible for people that are differently able that can't get into the field and climb around and hike and look at the rocks. 
I think the history of geosciences is complex and problematic. There's a lot of environmental racism and there's a lot of extraction related to geosciences. So it has a history of being related to oil and gas extraction and critical minerals extraction, which has fueled inequities and has allowed for kind of that, that barrier of entry. There are some programs that are still very um, focused on oil and gas and energy resources. And there's a lot of new programs that are now focused on, you know, specifically tackling climate change. For queer people to achieve equity in the workplace, we need to look at equity surrounding other identities and, and aspects of our society. I think to be very general, we need to look at these spaces and the institutions that host them and dissect and disassemble them and, and restart. We need to have a conversation about why they haven't been working for queer people and other marginalized communities. We need to recognize that and have a conversation that's inclusive of queer people and marginalized people and talk about how rebuilding that would look like. And I think to do that, we need to have honest conversations that recognize the truth and see what harm these institutions have done. Instead of having to check, you know, those boxes, it's gay, straight, transgender, man, woman, et cetera. We just, you know, check a box that says, those boxes that says, I'm not a robot, I'm, I'm human. <laughs> I'm also very proud to, to have been involved in mentorship and teaching the last several years. It's been really rewarding. I first started mentoring students in junior high and I really haven't stopped since then. It's become a really valued part of my educational and professional experience. I mean, we all need help, right? To get to, get to where we wanna go, like we can't do it alone. And again, like some of these spaces are just becoming more and more closed off. I think accessibility has improved in some areas, but it's become even harder in other areas. I think knowledge and access to education is, is still very hard to, to um, achieve. And so if you have someone to help you, it can make a, a life of a difference. I would really like to lead or just be a part of a research program that continues to address the challenges and effects of climate change on our waterways, our coastlines, our watersheds, and how we're going to be able to adapt and mitigate the effects of climate change. I would like to keep mentorship and teaching kind of involved in my career to some degree or another. I would like to make more time for my hobbies and focus on uh, reading and writing more. That's more enjoyable to me. I used to run marathons and stuff, and I would like to get back to that, maybe do my first triathlon in the next few years. To my younger self, I would just say, you know, trust and love yourself. It is hard to, to find that trust in yourself um, when you're constantly doubted and you don't see a reflection of yourself anywhere in your community. Get the help that you need to. Like, it's really hard to get help when you feel isolated and alone and different than everyone else. But as soon as you reach out a little bit and try to find some help, it can make a huge difference and really change your life. So I'm glad that, you know, you fight that battle within yourself to recognize your queer identity. Many of us have to do that, but we don't have to do it alone always. So it's, it's really good. I know it's hard to reach out and to admit that as soon as you can get some, it, it's, it can make a world of a difference. STEAM has traditionally, especially STEM, has been really defined by written and unwritten rules, right? And it's been defined by a largely, uh, uh, you know, capitalist Western societies. And I would say, just try to rule break, try to get into STEAM and follow your interests and your curiosities wherever it leads you. Be creative, make up your own rules and, and just go with your interests. And I'd also say, find a mentor like we talked about earlier, that you can't really get to where you want to be alone, you need some help. And so finding a mentor that supports your interests, that gives you room to be creative and be yourself. Find that person or that group of people, that network, and, and run with it.